Well, good morning, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 2nd, 2020, recorded around 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at Tropical Storm Isaias, maximum sustained winds have actually decreased uh, overnight to 65 miles per hour. Pressure has risen to 996 millibars. This is expected to remain a tropical storm uh, throughout its entire life cycle now, although there's some caveats, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Right now, this is uh, getting close to skirting the east coast of Florida, and it remains to be seen whether or not this actually uh, does make landfall or exactly how close to the coastline it gets because there's a lot of different things going on here. We'll talk about that here in a minute. We can see right now the official forecast has us kind of skirting the coastline. Tropical storm warnings are all the way up from near Miami uh, to all the way into Charleston, uh, South Carolina to near Myrtle Beach with tropical storm watches now including uh, portions of uh, North Carolina including Wilmington and, and some of the uh, communities there in uh, south, uh, southeast North Carolina. So again, that's going to be pretty significant because now what happens here in Florida, and I've been keep saying this, what happens now over the next 12 to 24 hours is very crucial for determining where the storm is going to go and how strong it's going to be. Currently, this is not expected expected to intensify much on approach into the Carolinas, although that can change pretty rapidly. And there is signs that this could be a tad bit stronger on approach to the Carolinas. So if you live along the Carolina coastline, um, you know, anywhere from South Carolina to North Carolina, you need to start paying and be paying attention to this, especially if you live in, in Charleston, uh, where that area is very susceptible and prone to storm surge and flooding anyway. Go ahead and start taking precautions uh, to minimize the flooding potential there. Um, if you live along the Outer Banks, you know, you need to start thinking about your hurricane preparedness plans in case this is a hurricane by the time it gets there and there's a lot of uncertainty here so what's going on well this is the reconnaissance aircraft the air force reconnaissance aircraft that was in there uh, earlier this morning a couple of things that's been going on first of all you notice this very erratic motion with the kind of stair stepping effect of the low level center this is where our low level center is and it's very important to understand that now we're starting to see some differences and we'll shift over here to the uh, satellite presentation here and again this is taking a look here at the visible satellite combined uh, with the uh, lightning flashes which are these little X's right here so a couple things that's really going on well first of all we have as this loads there we go so first of all we have this big blow up of convection right here and our low level center is actually positioned right about here but if we take a look here at at the radar presentation uh, from our uh, GR uh, analyst products here, our mid-level center is actually positioned somewhere right about here with all this uh, kind of little uh, white um, little positive uh, things are, these are lightning strikes within the last about 30 minutes to an hour. And you notice the biggest concentration of lightning strikes is located right within this mid-level center. And it is entirely possible, you notice that we, we don't really have any convection on the west side of, of this system. It is entirely possible that our low-level center is now becoming uh, more exposed but also drifting towards that mid-level center. And that seems to be confirmed by the latest reconnaissance aircraft confirming almost that we have a low level center that is kind of drifting around into the mid level center which is positioned somewhere right in about here and we kind of saw this uh, taking place late last night and it is certainly looking a lot more possible and if we take a look here at the IR satellite from tropicaltippets.com you can see first of all this massive convective burst here but no convection on the west side there is almost devoid of convection you can actually see this arc-like future right here indicated in the IR satellite, that's actually the dry air being pushed away from the system. That's the, the dry air that the storm is kind of engulfing right now. There's very low relative humidity across this area, especially um, across this area. And there's some southwesterly shear, which is now becoming a little bit better organized or a little bit better aligned with the storm movement. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment but again this the big bulk of convection and your highest concentration of those thunderstorms is just north of the Grand Bahama Island again it is entirely possible that we might be starting to see this low-level center align underneath this mid-level center 
This could allow for some gradual organization during the day today. Uh, this also would keep it further off the Florida East Coast. You notice these wind barbs in through here are not really reporting much more than about, uh, you know, 10 to 15 knot winds. So, you know, 20 to 25 miles per hour, uh, you know, a sustained winds, maybe some gusts up to 30. But certainly one of the more important things are these squalls that are coming through. And we can take a look at that here from the latest, uh, the radar imagery here. First of all, this is again from the, the Melbourne radar site. This is our mid-level center located right through here. We'll highlight the better color. That's our mid-level center located right through here. And this is all the squalls now beginning to reach far inland, all the way to over near Orlando, the attractions area. Uh, north of Lake Okeechobee, and this is going to continue to rotate around. Again, this is a very slow-moving system, and only by 2 a.m. tonight are we expected to see this kind of make its closest approach into Central Florida and the Florida East Coast. So this is moving rather slowly, and that's going to be the trend throughout the next uh, 12 hours or so. So again, the greatest impacts are actually going to be from these squalls. The main center of circulation as it comes by, if it is completely devoid of convection, will not be producing a lot. However, if this can slightly align better with the orientation of the mid-level center, which is entirely possible, it, it is possible you could see some stronger winds. And you notice here, I mean, we're still getting, you know... Um, Tropical storm force winds, this is a, a, a meso net site of a wind gust up to about uh, 39 miles per hour or 34 knots. So 39, you know, 40 miles per hour, only an elevation of 74 feet above ground level. That's over there near Rivero Beach, Mango Park, and West Palm Beach. So that is indicative that we are getting, you know, even some of these very shallow storms or shallow convection is going to bring down some of that higher wind from the surface or from the, the the atmosphere down and that can mix in again especially with any of these heavier convective bands that rotate on shore like we're seeing up here in the orlando area you know this could bring some tropical storm force gusts but you're not going to really see anything sustained and again we are really going to be monitoring is this now the new mid-level center somewhere right in about here because if that happens, this is going to stay further offshore as it begins its north slash northwest journey. It's going to keep it further offshore, which means the worst of the impacts will also be further offshore as well. But we'll really have to see there with time. So this is the GFS forecast going out in time here. This is the 12 or the 6Z run valid as of 12Z or about an hour ago at 8 o'clock this morning. And you're taking a look here at the 18,400 foot level in the atmosphere and your uh, geopotential height, basically your strength of the ridge and your trough, uh, which is your trough is here and your ridge axis is located in through here. So a couple of things that's going on is that our trough is still kind of, or our uh, at ridge axis is kind of still holding on here. You can still see our ridge axis that's still trying to build over top of the system, but we have this persistent area of troughiness that's kind of digging in here. And what that's doing is it's slowly eroding the side of the ridge over here. It's trying to erode this extreme western side of the ridge, and it's not very successful in it, because you can see kind of the GFS bouncing around, but eventually that ridge now starts to be eroded a little bit more in this trough right here. Now as it starts to dig in, it's now going to start pulling uh, Isaias more towards the north. And that's going to allow for a gradual turn parallel to the coast and then eventually this same trough as it continues moving eastward is now going to affect it more around the uh, around the the ridge of the subtropical the around the axis of the subtropical ridge and that's going to allow it to turn away from the Florida coast now again how strong it is at this point really determines on the next 12 hours whether or not this actually can reform a center down downstream and stay off the Florida East Coast. If that happens, that would mean a stronger system potentially for the Carolinas. But if it does not happen, it means a potentially weaker system, especially with land interaction to Florida. It could have a kind of the opposite effect where now it causes a little bit of weakening. Regardless, though, the GFS gets us pretty close here to the Charleston area and the in, you know the South Carolina coast again. This is our big ridge axis trying to build over top of the system, but our trough here is kind of just eroding this 
you know, western side of the, the ridge here. So what, what ends up happening, this kind of scoots, but now again, this ridge is pretty strong up here to the north. I mean, this is a pretty strong ridge, and this is a relatively weak trough. And so what ends up happening, this kind of just scoots inland over the Carolinas, you know, Charleston, Mount Pleasant, Wilmington, North Carolina, and then up there into the Delvmar region. Now that is entirely possible, and again, the strength of the ridge has been sampled to be a little bit stronger so we'll have to watch the evolution today for our, our friends and, and folks down there in the Carolinas. So what's the HWARF showing? The HWARF is a pretty good track uh, model, not uh, pretty good with intensity, but intensity forecasting is where we have the least skill in. But this is basically the 6Z or the 0Z run valid as a 12Z today. Uh, again, 991, so a little bit off. It's, it's not 991, but again, this brings it very close to the Florida East Coast. Again, you know, Cape Canaveral, you know, Bavard County, very close to those regions. And again, it's moving around the subtropical ridge at this point in time. Eventually, you know, out here, it starts to bring it dangerously close out here into the Carolinas after making that more of a northeast turn. This would give it a more favorable shear vector align and that would allow potentially for some strengthening out in the short term. And we can see that here indicated by the HMON, how the HMON indicates a strengthening system on approach into the Carolinas. But again, how close does it get to Florida is going to be the big determining factor in where this goes ultimately, uh, you know, by late tomorrow and, you know, on Tuesday is really going to be factoring in where the storm goes or, you know, in the short term, can it form a center, uh, you know, reform a center downstream of its current projected path? Again, right now, if we take a real quick look here at the interactive cone from the Hurricane Center, one important thing to keep in mind here is it will turn on the, the tracks too. This is for the, the 8 o'clock intermittent advisory. These sustained tropical storm force winds are approaching the west coast of, or the east coast of Florida, rather. And again, a track slightly offshore now would bring this uh, sustained tropical storm force wind away from land. And again, you would only see these, these uh, tropical storm force winds in any gusts in through here. But again, if it fails to relocate a center, this is going to continue on its current path and again would bring these tropical storm force winds pretty close to the inland locations and along the coast with some gusts to near hurricane force especially if there can be any significant squalls going in through there so again a lot is going to depend on the next 12 hours or so and how uh, this really begins to interact with the land interaction combined with any frictional convergence, uh, increasing thunderstorm convection, or a possible center reformation. Again, the official Hurricane Center forecast has us coming up and making landfall into South Carolina here, and then eventually moving up in North Carolina, and then continuing to near Philadelphia and up in towards the Northeast after becoming now a post-tropical cyclone. So again, a lot is going to depend here on the next six, six to 12 hours across uh, Florida for determining impacts to the Carolinas. And again, impacts could begin as early, really, as uh, you know tomorrow afternoon and evening for the Carolinas, all right? So make sure you take that into account, even uh, the Georgia coastline, tropical storm warnings for the Georgia coastline and to near Jacksonville. Storm surge watches remain in effect for West Palm Beach all the way up to near Jacksonville, all right? Hope you all have a great rest of your morning and early afternoon. Again, I am, um, you know, debating on whether or not I'm going to put out the cameras. Um, you know, a lot is going to determine on the next about couple of hours or so because our local impacts aren't going to begin really for the next few hours other than some isolated rain bands. So we have to take a couple of things into consideration. But again, I do have the live weather station uh, data that's kind of being pulled right now. And uh, it's obviously right here so that is that for now again we'll be watching the short-term trends i'll be updating on twitter in the description down below thank you everyone for your support that really means a lot to me and i will see you guys back here later this afternoon stay safe everyone i'll see you later